So the live-action franchise gleefully flails onward like some kind of box office wildebeest, and Transformers 3 is slowly starting to rear its ugly, stupid, terrible-looking, stupid, stupid, ugly head. So I'm going to do exactly what I did last time and break out one of them all-spark power dudes I've been busting for an excuse to review. Ladies and dudes, I give you Movie Crankcase. So we're starting to see what Dark of the Moon has in store, and one of the new bad guys is called Crankcase. And I suppose I should probably be raging about the reuse of the name, but I'm not. Come on, he's a store-exclusive repaint. Nobody cares if his name gets reused on a character that's totally different. It's just filler. It's not even the first time it's happened. Dark of the Moon. Dark of the Moon. I know Revenge of the Fallen was silly, but Dark of the Moon? It's not a good name for a movie about fighting robots. So as per use, Crankcase is a Cybertron repaint and as such really, really doesn't fit in with the freaky movie types. He's just far too cute and round. He's sort of not really dumpy, but like baggy. And he just feels really small. I mean, look at his tiny little torso with these limp, meaningless arms and shoulders. I do rather like his head though. He's like Lego Robocop and he's got a hat hard on. I mean, he's got a hat hard on. I said it again. And oh my, is that some sideways light piping? Marvelously, Crankcase even gets to keep his old Trigacon gimmick. It was like you press a button and the cannons would like heave slowly over his shoulders. But these babies, these babies explode out the back at light speed. I approve. But is that gimmick really worth this much kibble? I'm gonna say yes. And here's where the rest of the plastic went. Look at these legs! My god! I mean, you've got these weedy little stumps and then BAM! It's gonna be about 50% of the robot mode, it's just shins. I mean, they're too wide and they're too deep and they've got two feet each. Two feet each! He is hiding Red Alert's handy toolkit in there, though, with the claw and the hammer, which I guess could easily double as blunt instruments for mean-spirited thrashings. But again, is that sort of boring feature worth having such terrible legs? Still, this is kind of a cute robot mode. It's small and bouncy and nice and blue, but it could really do with a stiff talking to about responsible use of bulk. <laughs> Transformation's alright, of course it's heavily leg centric, but what did you expect? The car mode's sorta of nice, you know, it's smooth and shiny, it's nice and low and wide, and it's a good size. But it ain't half ugly. I mean, look at the front end, it looks like it might be okay once it's recovered from the surgery. The leg panels on top really go a long way to bringing out the massive central gash. And check it out on top for some world class visible head. Maybe could have done without the clear windows? It's supposed to cover up your robot bits! Something's gone wrong when there's kibble on the inside. And you know, there's such a thing as too much blue. He's only breaking it up with the odd silver stripe and a bit of red. Nice badge there, hazmat. Well, yes, I have, thank you. On the bright side, though, that vicious gimmick still works. I tried to film it, but it's literally too fast for the computer to see. The noise it makes lasts longer. That is off the chain! So yes, this is yet another one of those toys that isn't very good, but I still like it because of what it means to me. It's kind of frustratingly crap, and I really can't recommend him too much. But for a modern day crankcase, it's spot on. So I suppose what I'm saying is that I like it because it'll do. In a bit then. 